I've always wanted to ask you this question, and uh, I, I don't know why I've never remembered until like today. Is uh, maybe it's inappropriate, but like, are you an any or an Audi? An any? Well, you you're having a dinner with your American friends, right? Yeah, any or Audi? No. Thank stuffing in the bird or out the bird. All right, fine. Ah, some people, no sense of humor. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to our American friends, and we are so, so close now to being able to visit you for short terms. And uh, isn't that a big COVID environment breakthrough? By the way, welcome to season two, episode 47 already of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. That would be me. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars. We are powered by WeStream. We are supported by Carlo and his gang at Performance Heating and Air and uh, the Shirk uh, Bunch and their crew at The Verge Insurance. Also supported by uh, Niagara 411. We'll talk more about that. Nick and all of you supporters, thank you very much. And we are about to go in once again to Fiddler's Poor House here in uh, beautiful downtown St. Catharines. And we've got a very exciting show coming up for you today. So if you stick around, in about 30 seconds or so, we'll fill you in on our guests. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this program today on a lot of different levels. It's a little bit drizzly downtown St. Catharines, but we have a nice warm day, albeit a bit of a damp one. So stick around, we'll have some fun. A Niagara 411 Live with Lee next. We are live once again. Thursdays come around so fast. I think we have like maybe two Thursdays in a week. You know, it just seems like bam, it's one Thursday and we're saying so long. And uh, we have another Thursday and we're saying hello. Well, hello and uh, welcome to this episode 47 of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. We have Kevin Jack, ladies and gentlemen, on the right-hand side of your screen, our executive producer, the know-all, be-all, the oracle of uh, Niagara 411 Live. Kevin, how was your week? Uh, it was great. Had uh, our daughter's eighth birthday party last Yay! weekend. Things wow. are starting to feel a little more normal as okay. we're allowed some gatherings. You know, any parent with kids that have had birthday parties during COVID, it's just been a total lunch bag letdown. Yeah. So it was nice to celebrate with friends and family and classmates. And other than that, it's been a smooth week. Lee, how about yourself? Terrific. Uh, we have, um, we have uh, some family visiting from British Columbia. My younger son, his wife, and uh, their two children uh, one is uh, just over three, the other one is about five months. So you can imagine that I've been sleeping really well, uh, totally rested, uh, no chaos at all in the gift right. But anyway, it's been, uh, it's been great to have them. They, uh, they took a long trip out, an adventure to drive out from here to British, from British Columbia. So that was, that was an experience for them. They had a lot of stories to tell about that. And uh, they'll be heading back just before Christmas. Thank goodness they got one of those great big uh, four-wheel drive SUV things that'll you know power through just about anything this country has to offer. But man, weather-wise, this past week we didn't talk about talking about this, but just quickly, weather-wise, this is one of those weeks again where those of us that live in Niagara can thank the Lord that we actually do, or thank the genetic lottery, whatever, that we actually live in one of the most benign and moderate climate areas of our country because we have carnage happening still on the west coast three more um airstream uh, rivers atmosphere rivers as they call them are going to be hitting the west coast three of them left to come and they've already had enough rain there's much the same thing happening on the east coast as well massive uh, extreme events of weather and uh, boy, 
And again, we're kind of just settled in the soft spot. Here we spot. are, just sort of tucked in to the Niagara Peninsula, underneath the, scar the escarpment, sort of tucked between the two great lakes in our little pocket of security here in Niagara. Not that we want to put too fine a point on it, but uh, I find it ironic that these kind of events have happened not very long after the climate change summit in, uh, in Europe and all of the climate change discussions. It's almost uh, like somebody saying, uh, hey guys, you didn't, uh, you didn't quite accomplish enough, so we're gonna prove it to you that there's an issue. <laughs> uh, Lee, I'm just gonna interject here. We have an incredible show coming up today, and as always, we're gonna get to the list of who's coming on the show, because it's going to come fast and furious, but as always, anybody can come on the show, and I think sometimes uh, people click on that Zoom link thinking that that gets them into the show or on the show. Um, so we got a guy here in our green room, I think this is probably Andrew drinking his coffee, but probably didn't know he was going to come on the show. But he's here. Andrew. Are you with us? I don't think oh, so. Oh, there he goes. No, there he goes. So there you go. That's to say, if you, if you click on that Zoom link, that'll actually get you on you know, the show. You'll be a guest you, on the show. And you don't have to click the link to watch it. It's already it's it's already streaming, okay? But if you do want to come on the show, you're more than welcome to. And yes, coming up on the program today, um, we have some really interesting people for you. Uh, at about 12:20 today, we're going to be chatting with Nancy. She is the wife of the late Mark Stewart. Mark Stewart was involved in a, an accident, a traffic accident in Jordan. He was driving a pickup truck. Uh, an 80 year old woman made a mistake while she was on what, Spring Road, I believe, in that community. And Mark hit her, hit her car, hit her vehicle. And then careened into the path of a transport truck, a big rig. And Mark Stewart, at the age of 50, has passed away as a result. There is a publication ban been placed upon this story, this process. Um, and that is, that's one of the angles uh, that we're going to be talking about today with, with Nancy. We appreciate the fact that so soon after um, this incident that she's, uh, she's agreed to come on here. Uh, and when I say so soon, the accident itself happened on September the 23rd, or September the 3rd, excuse me. But a decision, um, it, was just, it was just brought back to our attention as of, as of Tuesday, because it was a charge laid just as of Tuesday, which is sort of the next step in the in the face, along with this publication ban. So um, we'll be chatting with Nancy about uh, 1220 today. And again, we thank her for, um, at this trying time, agreeing to come on and, and chat with us and tell us her story. About 1240-ish today, we promised last week that we would bring this uh, to you. 2021 being the 50th anniversary of um, a staple, uh, an iconic, what was started out as a, well, always was, I guess, but became more than just a children's television show on CHCH TV, uh, Channel 11 in 1971. That is Mitch Markowitz, who you are seeing there on the screen in his sort of homemade uh, smoking jacket. That's in his living room. That's just a little bit of the memorabilia and craziness that surrounds Mitch every single day. Mitch and his brother were the co-founders, uh, producers of the hilarious House of Frightenstein, of which this is the 50th anniversary. And we're gonna be chatting with Mitch about um, Hilarious House of Frightenstein 50 years later. And believe me, it has actually become more exciting as opposed to less. It's been a big year for Mitch and that show. Uh, that's a, a massive franchise. It's gone international now. It's absolutely spectacular what has, uh, what has happened with that. And you'll see, some, uh, you'll see some clips, you'll see some pictures that will, I'm sure, stir some memories for you and say, oh my God, I remember that? 
I haven't seen that in ages. Or if you are an absolute died in the wool hilarious House of Frightenstein friend like I am, you'll, uh, you'll be more than happy to join us when Mitch joins us uh, at about 12.40 today. We really look forward to that. Um, and coming up, our, our musical guest, as you, uh, you say, we always uh, play, uh, we have somebody to play us off the stage. It's old, uh, it's old stage phraseology, but that's what we do. We're on the stage here for about an hour and a half, and then we have a musical guest come on with Niagara Connections that plays us off the stage till next week. Sammy Morelli is going to be joining us. Sammy is a former Niagara resident, has worked in Niagara media here, as, uh, as did her husband. They are currently Currently, uh, out west, but there is enough of a Niagara connection here, and uh, a- enough talent here, I might add, that we wanted to bring this this to you. So Sammy Morelli is going to be here performing her uh, video and song to the t- entitled "Love Away." So that'll be up about uh, about one thirty ish today. Oh, also, uh, yes, Lee here. Just I mean, before you get too far, I love the video. Uh, which I really think is a standout. So I just want to give people an idea of the uh, the production quality of this because it's oh, just yeah. so spot on. Okay, so, so we're going to jump ahead a little bit. Well, here you go. So here's part of the video, and we'll be playing it with all the uh, the audio, but it's like a um, cheesy 1970s dating show. <laughs> and that's that's the premise of the video, and I believe In Sammy... In she plays all the parts. Yeah, I, I think so. That wouldn't make... Well, it wouldn't make it fun if she didn't play all the parts. Yeah, so that's coming up at the end of the show. And uh, just before her, I'm assuming you were going to get to uh, Ryan. I was. Okay. Can I do that now? Well, Is yeah. it okay? Now would be a good time. You're producing this thing. Tell me if you're not. Okay. okay, now. Now, Ryan Nava, uh, Tailgates, bar and grill owner. We have been talking about Tailgates uh, in Welland now for about the last three weeks. There was a lot of misinformation and a lot of they went that away kind of conversations with regard to why the restaurant was closed. There was uh, a story at the beginning that they were uh, locked out due to the lack of payment of rent, etc. This was proven to be not the case in the fact that there were repairs that needed to be done, specifically with the roof and uh, etc. etc. Well, there has been some progress on this story. Positive progress, as far as I understand. And uh, Ryan Nava will be joining us. about 10 after 1 today to talk to us uh, about that and fill us in and and that's and that's good it's a it's one of those one of those places that has been around forever and if it goes away or even if it moves there's something there's there's something stolen it's like oh you took a piece of my uh, nostalgic memories of Niagara away or well it away it's changed we don't like change people don't like change well apparently uh, apparently we're going to be okay but we'll have uh, we'll have Ryan by to tell their story at about ten after one today. And uh, Lee, before we go any further, yes, uh, our buddy Andrew just hop back in here, so maybe we can have a conversation with him right. and kind of explain how the uh, how the show works. Andrew, hello. Look, looks like you're in a uh, a warehouse. You got a warehouse behind you. You're drinking an orange pop. We're t- we're talking to you, pal. And there he goes. He drops off. Well, so. We have introduced you twice now. Yeah, Andrew. all right. So, I mean... But that's pe- how easy it is to get on. <laughs> all right, here. I mean, I'll try... Maybe he's leaving by accident. I'll try one more time here and all see right. if we can uh, make base with... Or, or <laughs> make a connection with the mission control. Is that you? Can uh, you hear me? Yeah, we can yeah, hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. I'm not Andrew. I'm Steve Kennedy. I'm Nancy Kennedy's son. How did... Oh, my friend. How, well, how did we get Andrew coming on there? Kevin? Know. Oh, whatever whatever you logged into Zoom as came up as uh, Felicity and Andrew. Oh, that's my kids. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. okay. And uh, are you coming on just to uh, watch your mom's interview? Uh, I'm hoping to. It depends how busy work gets. I might have to shut it off. Yeah. Well, is, um, it, is it saved afterwards on YouTube to watch later? Uh, it, it is always available on Niagara 411. All of our programs are archived. So you can go on Niagara 411 at any time and find the entire show and, and watch the interview. We will also be doing an In Case You Missed It post throughout the course of the week. Uh, and I know that the, the interview with your mother will be one of those. 
and um, so and and yes, it will be posted on YouTube as well. It'll be available on Twitter. It's available even as a podcast, wherever you get your podcast. So we are the platform is 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 everywhere. And in order to watch the interview, you do not have to be in this green room where you are right now. All you have to do is just look, continue to watch Niagara 411, and um, and the live broadcast will just come right at you. Yeah, the, the, Perfect. Yep, the viewing experience, and may I say before uh, your mom comes on, uh, condolences to the passing of Mark. I know stepfather, yeah. but also, you know, grandfather to your children, and I know you've been going yep. through a hard time. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, so condolences to you, and uh, by all means, uh, stay with us as long as you can, and, uh, and come back later if you miss some, because it's always there. Hopefully with you guys airing it and the stir that uh, everybody is arising in the area right now, we can... Uh, get this publication ban removed so she can be labeled and everybody can know who she actually is and who she what she's responsible for yeah um i mean uh, and you said it was steve yep yeah steve i guess that's one of the things that we want to talk to your mom about is kevin and i and, and others i'm sure are a little confused frankly about why there is a publication ban and what actually is banned from this conversation it seems unusual it seems like a, a different kind of procedure for these sorts of cases to us so that's one of that's one of the things that we would like some some enlightenment about frankly i think we all are looking for that because it doesn't make sense in any matter that they're not airing it yeah, we don't know what the criteria is for a publication ban, but yeah. based on what I've seen in the past, this doesn't seem to fall into any of the categories. But And what are the parameters, et cetera? So, uh, I also don't know. I'm, I'm not saying they're wrong. I don't know. We intend, to, we intend to try to ask the questions at least. But thanks for clicking in here anyway. Sorry we, uh, sorry we sort of put you on the spot of coming in and out, but uh, now you got it figured out, and uh, hopefully you can stick around and uh, view the show as long as possible. Perfect. But yeah, I'd, uh, I'd encourage you to, uh, I'm going to boot you out of the green room here because I saw your mom came in, so I want to get her all set up, and I'd okay. encourage you, yep. Steve, to go watch it on Facebook, okay? All right. Yep. Thank you. Cool, man. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. So as Kevin does get that set up for um, his mom, Nancy, uh, wife of late Mark Stewart, um, Steve is a stepson uh, of Mark and he has children in the 10 year old range they're in that in that age range and that's about how long as we understand it that's about how long that uh, nancy and mark were together so they think about this man as uh, as a as a grandpa pretty much so anyway um sad story the way this took place and the person that was at fault was over the legal limit of uh, intoxication so that is the other aspect of this conversation is to once again highlight how critical it is that people make correct choices with regard to their lifestyle and their operation of vehicles. It's just, it's so critical that that be the case. Uh, Kevin? We have, uh, we have Nancy and she's, she's here and she's standing by, so I think we should just, uh, I think it's the perfect time. Let's jump in. Hi, Nancy. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Uh, I know this must be um, stressful but um, hopefully we can help shed some light on your story and I see you've come prepared and thank you for doing this with uh, to make this real for us this this is Mark right this that's correct okay uh, and you were you were with Mark for I, I mentioned about 10 years is that correct correct so this is a, 2011. so this is a this is pretty wide, a uh, pretty wide family that this has affected. Now we just saw your son Steve come on uh, the air, and we had a quick chat with him. 
explain to us the other members of the family that we're talking about here. Who, who else is affected by this story? It's, it's just not his parents and his sister, but there's nieces and nephews and grandchildren and so many friends that are family to us and have been family. Um, people that we work with, people through the business, through people that we've met through camping. It, it's just not, yes, it's affected my life completely, but it's affected so many other people's lives. And you've got, you've got grandchildren that probably think of this man the length of time they've known him that, as their grandpa. That is their grandpa. He was there since they've been little. That's grandpa. That's grandpa that took him fishing, grandpa that took him camping, grandpa that did the four-wheeling. That's their grandpa. They lost their grandpa on top of losing their papa in, in March. So they've really taken a toll this all has taken a toll on everybody and it could have been could have been and should have been avoided if better choices were made and drinking and driving is not a good choice never has been never will be so this was uh at the intersection or conjunction of is it victoria avenue and spring road is that where this spring happened creek. spring creek yeah spring creek and so as I understand it, Mark was driving his truck and the 80-year-old operator of another vehicle crossed into his path, correct? Correct. Correct. He, he hit the vehicle, correct. which in turn careened his vehicle off to a collision with a, a, a transport truck is that correct correct and and mark as a result perished correct the truck driver the, the the truck driver was uh had injuries but not serious um the 80 year old woman was taken to hospital with injuries correct correct now what is the what what is this what is the status at the moment for you in what way in what like where where are we with this case or or what how far can you tell us how what can you talk about there's not a lot I can talk about but what I can say is she was finally released uh, yet uh, Tuesday right and that's when charges were laid. So she's released from hospital. I don't know where she is. I'm assuming she's at home. She did get her bail hearing. There is conditions. I don't know the conditions. What can you? I don't really can, know a lot. Can you tell us what she was charged with? Um, one is uh, impaired causing death, um, operation uh, of a blood alcohol, greater than 80 milligrams per hundred and i believe the last one is dangerous operation um causing death okay they're uh, pretty serious i guess and so they should be nancy exactly. what what can you tell us about this publication ban that is the other thing that we wanted to try to chat with you about because neither Kevin nor I, or numerous comments that we've seen, can understand in this situation why there has been a publication ban and, and what, what, what the ban is banning, <laughs> to be honest. What, what can you tell us about that? To be honest, all I was, when I first found out when all this was gonna be, be happening and the charges were finally being laid, yeah. um, I asked, there won't be any publication ban and I was told no there wouldn't be and then after I was told after her bail hearing there's a publication ban and I couldn't tell anybody who she was but prior to that I have because there was no publication ban um, my personal opinion what I feel and what it what they're telling me they're saying it's to to protect the integrity of the case do I believe that? No. 
Do I believe it's to protect her reputation, her family's reputation and her business? That's what I believe. Because the integrity of the case? No. No. So you think there um, are, you feel that there are some personal forces at play behind the scenes that are trying to, for the lack of a better word, muffle this? I think so. But it's okay to save her reputation so that she could have a fair trial. But it, it's, to me, it's so unfair because Mark paid the ultimate price. We've paid the ultimate price. Our future's not there. But we can still protect the person who, if she wasn't, if she she didn't get behind the wheel of her car, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. I'd still be the nobody that goes to work, comes home, makes dinner, and sits. And we sit and chit-chat. I don't have yeah. that. But they're protecting her. Nancy, and that's wrong. Nancy, um... Do you have legal representation yourself? Yes. What is your what is your legal advice been with regard to this? There hasn't been in in the charges for Mark. Do I have yeah, legal representation? Well, yeah, no, in in with regard to the publication ban, with regard to um, what's happening the entire I didn't even know about the publication ban until after the fact. Oh, okay. And the more that I read today, that, that really was starting to annoy me because the victims are supposed to be part of that and could speak to that. And it just kind of, to me, got slid under the carpet. So am I happy? No. There's so a is lot the of things that... Is the, ban, is, is the ban mainly so that the... Is an it's an identity thing for this for this eighty year old woman. It's more of a keeping her identity under wraps. Is that what is that what this is about? Is that all this is about? I honestly can't answer that because I I honestly don't have the answers. I I'm not really getting. All I was told it was to to protect the integrity of the case. The case. That's it. Okay. Um, I have to... Does it make sense? No. It doesn't. Kevin, it looked like you wanted to weigh in here for a little bit. Well, I, I, I had a conversation uh, with Nancy yesterday, just ahead of today's interview, and, and we talked at length, and I'm going to give you an opportunity now, Nancy, just to talk a little bit about, about Mark, the person he was, what it was that, that you two did. You said that you spent all of your time together, and that was your leisure time, your play time. I mean, on the day of, you talk about affecting communities. My parents owned and operated a campground for 20 years. I know what a community is, and you said on the day, September the 3rd, Mark was actually heading to the net campground on, on Highway 24, and everybody knows Shirkston. that, which means there's a community. That's the, the net one, not the Shirks one, the net right. one right on, yeah, right yeah, on 24. Yeah, yeah. And the whole trailer park there had to have their worlds turned upside down. Nancy, can you, can you speak to that a little bit and just help everybody know the type of man that Mark was? Man, uh Mark was special. He was unique. Let's put it that way. Um, he was very complex, but he was a very loving, giving man, and he helped anybody and everybody. Was he opinionated? Yeah, but so am I. Um, <laughs> he had a laugh. If if you were, no matter how mad I was at him, if he if he started to laugh, he had to laugh, and his smile. But his laugh was so infectious, and I missed that. But even the people at the park, he was coming that weekend to help friends level up their trailer. It was, by all accounts, supposed to be a good weekend. It was, you know, Labor Day weekend. There's just, it's affected everybody. How did you guys meet? Um, a good friend of ours, mine, that I've known since I've been probably about five. And her husband introduced us. Um, we went out for dinner. And it was a, we just talked about everything. Then he asked if I wanted to go to the motorcycle races and at the Willow County Club. I said, okay, we went, did that. We laughed, we had a great time. Didn't want the night to end. We went out for coffee. I had to work the next morning. Um, I didn't sleep much that night. And then the next day he says, you want to come for dinner? And 
kind of, I guess, some people call it love at first sight. I really don't know if it was love at, so, at first sight. It was a lot of intrigue, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, what, did he do, what, did he, what did he do for a living? Yeah, him and his father owned uh, Stewart's Deliveries. It's a flatbed trucking company in Welland. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> that was uh, his baby. That was his baby. How would... Um, how would you like to see this? I know you don't want to be in here at all, but what do you what do you want to have happen now? What would you like to see? We've got this situation. The the woman is out of hospital. We know she's been charged. You know what charges they are, and I assume that the legal system will will progress as it is as it's supposed to, and it usually takes quite a long time. But what is, what would you like to see happen right now? What I would like to see happen right now is if, if nothing else, people to get the message, drinking and driving has consequences. And those consequences are immense. It might, you know, you, you go out, you have a cocktail, and then you go have another one, and you think nothing of it, you get behind the wheel, but you don't realize one drink maybe even two will put you over and the devastation that it can cause to a to to a family to to a business to to friends it's enormous so if people this holiday season want to drink and drive don't for starters but if you want to go out and have a drink make arrangements call a friend put money aside get a cab stop the drinking and driving i would have thought at 80 years old she should have known better but clearly didn't. But I don't want to see anybody else go through what I'm going through. It's devastating. It's truly devastating. Does it matter to you whether this publication ban is in place or not? Still? I would like it lifted because I was brought up. When you do the do a crime, you do the time, you own up to what you've done. Why not own it? You did it. What, what, are you, what are you afraid of? What are you ashamed of? Who are you protecting? Well, I'm sure they're ashamed of a lot, but what is the... I'm, I don't understand the legal aspect of it. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how it comes from the, uh, the NRPS to the judicial level or whatever as to, as to why. That's the, that's the process that confuses me because there are an awful lot of people that are identified in the media without having even been convicted or, or charged with anything, really. Uh, and their names are out there. And yeah. I, I, don't, I, I, don't catch the, I don't catch the logic now, behind let, the process. Let me be the person to point out the elephant in the room, Nancy, and, and, and I'll be the one to say this, that um, in some of the comments that I've been reading, there appears to be a family connection between the woman that has been charged and the NRP. And that's not to say that there's anything afoot or anything at play, but people are drawing conclusions. I guess that's all I could say. And we've mentioned many times, Lee, that I don't know the criteria for a publication ban. No. So I can't say that this doesn't fit, but my history, what, what I do know, it, it, it sounds, it's, it doesn't seem right. We may be violating it as we speak. I don't know. Uh, frankly, I don't care either, but um, there you go. Um, so, Nancy, let me just ask you once again. Uh, the lady was charged on Tuesday after being released from hospital. There is a publication ban in place. Um, I'm assuming that she's been arraigned on those charges. That usually happens very, very quickly after the charges have been laid. And then the system grinds forward. Have you been informed by anybody where the where the case against this woman is going or where it is or any sort of timeline before you get some sort of satisfaction that the process is is going forward the only thing i know at this point she had her bail hearing that was tuesday charges she was formally arrested and charged had a bail hearing yeah. the next proceeding is january 12th, I believe I was told. Okay. Um, 
And then that, I think when she either pleads or asks for more time from the court or I really honest, I, I don't know. Right. I've been in the dark about a lot of things. I will say though, that I do have a detective. Um, he's been good. Um, and the sergeant has been good with me. I can't, I can't knock the NRP. I really can't. Um, and part of it too, is probably myself. You get a lot of questions that everybody has questions, but you also have to remember, I'm not the person I was. And to sit down and actually think of all the questions, they, they come to you sometimes in the middle of the night. And if you don't write it down, I might not remember. And so when I do talk to them, sometimes I don't think to ask, um, but it's getting better. The kind of the fog is kind of lifting a little bit. Um, so there is questions. And, and, and my biggest one is, is, is this band, the things that I've read, that I read today specifically was part of the victims are supposed to be able to have a say. Well, as far as I'm concerned, yes, Mark is a victim, but the, the person speaking for Mark, in, in my opinion, is myself. Mm -hmm. um, he had no longer has voice thanks to her. Um, and I should have been there. I should have been able to, to say something. It shouldn't have been all done with the prosecutor or whoever was there. I should have been a part of that and I wasn't. So those are questions that I will be asking why I wasn't a part of that. Cause it doesn't make sense. None of this keeping it hush hush the only the only reason that i could think of is a to protect her reputation to protect her business protect her family and possibly her are going to plead not guilty to the charges so therefore it won't taint jurors nancy thank you very much for joining us uh i think we've gone about as far as we can go today with what we know with what you know um our sincere condolences to you and your family um, Thank you. Uh, in in Mark's passing and, and and the angst that you'll continue to go through, and I hope we'll talk again over the over the coming months as as the story unfolds. And please stay in touch with us, and and I hope you stay well. Uh, and um, all I can say is thank you. God bless, and we'll we'll talk to you again. Thank you for having me. Whew. There, but for the grace go I, uh, you know. My goodness. All right. Um, here we are. Welcome to episode 47 of season two of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. That would be me. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars, our title sponsor for this program, and we thank them always for their support. Uh, as the major sponsor behind this program. To Performance Heating and Air, Carlos and his uh, gang at Performance Heating and Air. This is the season, by the way, this is the season. Got to make sure that your, uh, your heating systems are up to snuff because you never know when you're going to get one of the super, super cold snaps and you go, oops, maybe I should have had this thing serviced. Well, give, uh, give Performance Heating and Air a call if you, uh, if you have that need. And to uh, Mark Shirk and Blake and the gang at Verge Insurance Group, another Niagara formed and founded and operating business for all your insurance needs, we thank the Verge Insurance Group as well. And uh, also powered by WeStream, Kevin uh, and his uh, partner Brandon Scram uh, had a big weekend. You guys were back in the sports business this past weekend. Yeah, a couple weekends ago, we were at Nottawasaga Inn up in Alliston, and we were streaming some uh, women's hockey. It's great. These are the Olympians of the future. It was the um, U18 Challenge. So they split Ontario into two teams. They brought the best females from Quebec, and they all played against each other up at uh, Nottawasaga Inn. So that was a, a lot of fun to get sports back under our belt because yeah. it's been gone for, gosh, a couple of years now, it seems. Well, that was that was one of the big staples or one, one of the core areas of your business when you got this WeStream uh, process underway a few years ago. And it was horrible to see that dry up with the COVID as a lot of businesses saw their core customers go away because of all the COVID restrictions. So great to have uh, great to have you back. Yeah, it was good. It was good <laughs> to be get, get back. Um, and we're back to doing a show, and it's a very busy show still yep. coming up. We've got uh, Ryan Nava. People down in Welland wondering what's going on with tailgates. Yeah, he'll be joining us in about half an hour's time. But uh, it is it is timely, so I think I will just uh, 
Hit the intro. Okay, here's the intro. He can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. <laughs> the one, the only inimitable Vincent Price and joining us on the program uh, the co-founder, co-star of the hilarious House of Frightenstein, of, uh, of which intro you just saw from 1971. Mitch Markowitz, how are you today, my friend? I'm terrific, and uh, good afternoon, and welcome to Castle Frightenstein. Yes, welcome indeed. Um, where, where are you right now? What have you got, uh, what have you got around you? Lee, let me rephrase that. Welcome back to Castle Frankenstein. Yes. As we know, it's here before. And it, 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 it's Boston. Yeah, Boston. Welcome indeed. Uh, where, where are you right we now? Have we just, have just... Wow. I see what's going on. I think, uh, Mitch, I think you're watching the stream probably, right? On another device? I'm actually I'm watching it on my phone in the... Oh. Okay. Yeah, just from the technical director here, we're going to have to ask you just turn off the stream. And just watch Lee on the. Uh... We've got we've got a little bit of feedback going on because you're watching the stream on another uh, object there. Sorry, man. You know, actually, we what we're doing. Yeah. Is just your link. We joined your. Okay, hang on a second here. Yeah, all right, so okay. you're, you're watching the stream somewhere else, and we just need you to just be in the Zoom. So I'm not sure, maybe, maybe you'd have to, is it better now? Okay, how are we now, Mitch? I don't know, hey. No, we're still, guys. You know what, I'll pull them uh, off the screen here. Okay, so, we'll get it sorted. So I think you have an iPhone there, right? So if you could just close, yes. you, you probably have Facebook open in the background. If you could just close Facebook. Do you know how to do that? We don't, uh, we'll don't. we try it. We don't have anything open, actually. Let's see. So I think you have an iPhone there, right? So if you could yeah, just close, we've, got, we've got two feeds going. Okay. Do you know how to do that? Nobody goes hungry. Okay, I'll go back and, and restart it. Yeah, it's a little tough. We've never really run into this situation before. We've got two feeds going. Is this a dry run? <laughs> no, it's not a dry run. We are live right now. Okay, I'll go back. It's just that we're. It's it's just that we need to be. We need to have you just looking at the actual contact with us, the Zoom room, as opposed okay. to watching it come back. No, it's not a dry run. We are live right now. Okay, I'll go back. It's just that we're yeah. What I might suggest is um, maybe just. Close all the programs, uh, restart your phone, and then okay. and then come come back in and, we'll, and we can you know okay. we'll hold we'll on. Pick it up. We'll That's get you. Right. A, we'll get you in about five minutes. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh heck, where's that coming from? I can still hear that. We'll it's coming from. We'll is that you? Okay. Is that me? I don't know. I don't have anything open. What the heck is that? Where the heck is that coming from? It was right? coming from me. Was it? Yeah. That was what? Was your phone? That was was my computer. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. It was oh all my, my phone. Gosh, Lee, all that. So that was bleeding out of your computer. Why did it all of a sudden start? I don't know. So, 
Oh, gosh, we're going to have to apologize to Mitch profusely. Absolutely. Because I feel bad about that. All right, here, yep. you know what? This is them coming back in, and uh, okay. we can wear the egg on this one. I shall wear the egg all over my face. And uh, just so you know, uh, oh, they're just <laughs> connecting. They can hear us now. That was uh, 100% on, on us. It's yeah. a situation we never came into no, before, but hundred uh, percent on me. Well, all right, here, Lee. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you chit chat. I will. I'll wear the goat horns. Mitch, hi. I have a mass. I have a massive. Apo- I have a massive apology to make to you. Uh, that where we were entering into that uh, the the feedback thing was entirely on me. Okay. So if you want, you can return to your. You can return to your chair, if you like. Where you were uh, at the very beginning, and uh, and right now um, you can you can hear me. I, I can loud yeah. and clear. Okay. Well, well, where that where that uh, where that confusion came from was entirely my bad. So I apologize. Um, no just to, you hey, you know what? Uh, why don't we? Uh, you know, for the for the purposes of editing, I'm just going to start it from the top. Pretend that whole thing never even happened. And uh, Mitch, you're gonna play the intro, and uh, and we'll just take it. We'll take this thing from the top. Let's see the sounds, intro. We're I think gonna that do the intro like again. The, uh, like the best thing here. Hold on. <laughs> make me very, very, very happy. <laughs> Another lovely day begins. Oh, so goes with green. Skin. So close your eyes and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine. To the castle of Count Frightenstein. Again, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we will try to get this right. I am such a technical uh, bad weenie. Mitch Markowitz, co-founder, co-star of the hilarious House of Frightenstein, debuted in 1971 on CHCH Channel 11 in Hamilton, uh, 2021, of course, the 50th anniversary. Let's try this again, Mitch. Welcome to the show. Well, Lee, good to see you. Welcome to Castle Frankenstein. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and uh, and yes, all we are live, so all those funny little foibles that we go through are uh, yeah. are are definitely live. And you are surrounded by a bunch of your friends, uh, Igor in the back, and uh, and Igor was played by uh, a gentle giant by the name of Vishka Reyes, R A I S, and. And of course, Billy Van played the lion's share of the characters on this show. One of the promises that I made to the viewers of this show is that you would tell us how this thing started because it is a fabulous story of Canadian entertainment uh, and happening here in the Golden Horseshoe. You and your brother got this idea and approached the station. So can you rewind history all the way back to how this thing started? I wish I was in your video room so I could go (laughs) graphically show it all going time. But I don't have to do that. All you have to do is look at me. You're already back in time. Sure, I'd be happy to tell you the story. Once upon a time, there were the Markowitz brothers who had looked at CHCH TV Hamilton's, um, uh, oh, look, there's somebody climbing up the stairs. Bye, Rob. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we had looked at CHCH's schedule, and we had already produced a number of, of TV shows for CHCH, which is which was is a small independent TV station for those of you around the world that are not familiar with it. It's a small independent TV station, about a 40 minute drive outside of Toronto, which is the major market in the country. And um, 
we had done a bunch of shows for them. We realized that they did not have a real sort of big time flashy kid show. They did have a couple of kid shows on. They had one called Tiny Town of Time, which speaks for itself. It's the little kids coming on and doing whatever they do, sing or dance or whatever. And that show was geared more for the adults, actually. Look how cute those kids are than the actual kid audience. And they had another show called Captain Andy, which was an older gentleman who sat in a chair like I am and talked and read a story or two. And a good show, nice enough guy, but no pizzazz, if you will. So we came up with this idea for a, a pseudo, keyword there, pseudo, pseudo-horror-oriented kids TV show in the market somewhere between, you know, five and eight, maybe nine years old. And we went in to pitch the general manager of the station, it was Sid Bibby, and he was fine to let us come in right away. Went in, told him the premise and what we had in mind and all that, and he, he thought about it for a second. Now, he was a, Sid was a real big, no-nonsense kind of guy, like, like you, Lee. And uh, he, um, he looked down at us, we were sitting down, and he said, you know what, guys, let me think about that. So we realized, of course, right away that we had not closed the sale. Anybody who says, let me think about it, is going to do just that. If you're lucky, they're going to think about it. So we got in the car, started to drive back to Toronto, and we're bouncing ideas back and forth of how we could indeed close the sale. And uh, my brother had an idea, and he said, why don't we go back in and, and tell Sid, or ask Sid, what would you think if we could get a big-time Hollywood movie star? Seemed like a good enough idea at the time. Made another appointment, went back two days later told Sid our, our idea, and Sid, again, being a no-nonsense kind of guy, looked at us and said, like who? And my brother, everybody out there who's watching this interview yeah. has done or in their life. You know, he looked up into the sky in Sid's office, like hoping that an answer would come down from heaven or something. And then he looked back over at Sid and said, I don't know, like Vincent Price. And Sid's head spun around like, the, like in uh, The Exorcist the player's head and when it stopped he said listen if you guys could get vincent price the biggest horror movie star in the world to come and do our show in our little tiny tv station in hamilton ontario i'd sign right here right now for 130 hour long episodes and my brother being the kind of guy he is pulled the contract out of his back pocket that he had already had prepared put it down in front of Sid, Sid signed it, and 50 years later, that's history. Amazing, absolutely uh, amazing, because one of the, one of, one of the little things that uh, you missed that I think you told me when we were chatting personally is the fact that when you and your brother walked out of the studio, you both said to each other, how the hell are we gonna get Vincent Price? <laughs> <laughs> They get more child friendly when you said how the hell. We used a different a different word altogether. But it, it boiled down to the same thing. How how are we gonna get out of this jam that we just got ourselves into? How did you? Believe it or not, Lee, that was relative we had a friend back there back then, a guy named Al Guest, who owned the largest animation company in the country. Actually just produced in, in the stage of producing his own kids animated show called Rocket Robin Hood, maybe you remember it. So um, anyway, we told him about our dilemma and he said, it's not a big problem. I know Forey Ackerman, who owns a famous monster, that was a monster magazine in the world at the time. And I'm sure he'll be able to help you. So he put us in touch with, with Forey and um, we got together with him. And he also owned the, the rights to a whole bunch of horror still photographs, black and white photographs. So we made a deal to license a bunch of those photographs. And you'll recall, whenever we had like five seconds to spare, we'd slug in one of those photographs with a, a funny crack about it. And, um, and then we, we gave, you know, the big reason we were there was Vincent Price. And he said, it's not a problem. I know Vincent. I'll put you in touch with him. And he gave us Vincent's phone number. We got in touch with Vincent and told him how we got his number and told him what we wanted to do. We were doing this, this show in, in Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, he thought about it for a second. And we told him that there were four good reasons why he should consider this idea seriously. The first idea was we'd get him in and out of town in two days. We'd shoot all his parts 
in two days. Now, there are a lot of stories out there that it took a week, took five weeks, whatever. We told him it would be two days. Didn't work out that way. It worked out to be four days, but we told him it would be two. We told him we would pay him, which is always a way to get somebody's attention. We told him that this was a kid's show and a pseudo horror kid's show. And that uh, since he'd never done a kid show before, that titillated him. The last was probably, the last one was probably the, <clears throat> the best point. We told Vincent that this is a small independent TV station. It has like zero audience. Nobody watches it. And uh, it's very local. So regardless of how bad this show ends up being, nobody's ever going to see it. So your reputation is intact. It won't be, nobody's going to look at that and say, oh, my God. That now, it didn't work out that way. It not being local at all. The show was syndicated across Canada. Then it was syndicated in the U.S. And then it played abroad in Norway and Spain. And as you, as you mentioned, it's been on now for 50 years. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary. And recently, I signed a deal with Bell Media's Crave TV. They're now airing it, all 130 episodes across Canada. And very recently, like as of about two weeks ago, I did a deal with Tubi. Uh, Tubi is a large streaming service in the U.S., and they have 41 million plus subscribers. And it's now 100, 130 episodes are now screening on Tubi across Canada, New Zealand, um, uh, Australia, uh, the United States, of course. So we now have a huge audience. And uh, this all came from something that we thought would be on for a year at CHCH and then die and go to TV heaven. It just didn't work out that way. Mitch, it's absolutely incredible when something like this happens beyond your wildest expectations, and I'm sure sure it has. This 50th anniversary year has been a big one for you because of the, I mean, you've made, as you were talking about, the recent deals with, with Bell and Crave and the LA people and things of that nature. How do you... How do you feel about this at, at this point in, in time? Because you're probably busier than you've ever been. And, and the answer to how do I feel with this time, based on that information, if that was all the information, I would feel great about it. The truth is that's not all the information. <clears throat> about, oh, I don't know, eight months ago or so, I did a deal with a big production company in Los Angeles. And the owner just happens to be uh, a guy named Stephen Bilo. He, he owns a thing called Unearthed Films. And he's a producer and, and a distributor, mostly horror films. And he grew up in Canada, watched the show, loved it. And I did a deal with him and his, his colleagues. And uh, <clears throat> they're going to do a Blu-ray box set of all 130 episodes. They're working on it now. And as you know, as most people know, Blu-rays, when people buy them, a box set of them, they expect absolutely incredible quality. So they're spending a great deal of time on, on editing what we gave them and then increasing it and adding more Wolfman segments, more music. And uh, they'll probably be editing throughout the winter and ready for release, hopefully sometime in the spring or summer of next year, 2020. That is, is truly amazing. What do you attribute the success and the long-term, uh, I guess, idolation, for the lack of another word, of this, of this show that you guys created. How come it's so popular to this day? I can answer that in one sentence. Billy Van, Billy Van, Billy Van, Billy Van, Billy Van. How did you... And I'm not surprised to hear you say that, because uh, a more incredible talent I don't think we've ever seen on the comedic stage. But um, how did you get him interested? How did, how did he become part of this franchise? I'll, I'll answer your question, uh, Lee, but let me just tell you the one more addition to this, this, this such an exciting year for me. I, I signed a deal about a year and a half ago with a company, a Canadian-based company called Head Spinner Productions. And um, they have now, it takes a long time when you do animation, they've now recently released an animated version of Frankenstein for a demographic somewhere between three and seven-year-olds. 
the happy house of Frankenstein. Because there is truly is a kids show, and uh, it's airing now on Family Channel Junior, and <clears throat> excuse me, Family Channel Junior on YouTube, and uh, it's doing very well so far. <clears throat> now the answer to your Billy Van story, I'm a little bit hoarse today, and a little bit of cow, a little bit of elephant. Anyway, um, the answer to your question about Billy Van. He was the farthest thing from our mind at the time because he was, so, you know, it's that, you know, you never see the forest for the trees. He was right in front of us. He was doing another show my brother produced for CHH that was syndicated. It was called Party Game, a charade show. Game. And it was, but our concept at the time was that we would hire the smallest human being we could find in the world to play the count and the biggest human being we could find to play his, his assistant, Igor. It's what you call a sight gag. That's what we were looking for. It's something when as soon as you look at the two together, you break up laughing. And I scoured looking for the smallest person I could find. Couldn't find anybody that we, we thought was appropriate. We looked in the U.S. We had a great deal of trouble there finding somebody that we thought was perfect. And um, we were about to abandon the idea. And then I got a call from an agent saying, you know what? I found somebody. The guy's name is Guy Big. No, I don't think that was the name he was born with, but that's the name he, he chose. He's 31 inches tall, perfect for your purposes. And we had to start shooting about three weeks from that point. So we acted abruptly. I got in touch with, we got in touch with, with Guy Big. And believe it or not, we offered him the job sight on scene, just based on what the agent had told us. That ended up being one of the biggest mistakes we ever made, but we did it. Next step was hiring Igor. That was easy. We found Fishka, Fishka Rays. He was 350 pounds, six foot four, looked like a monster. <clears throat> he was born and raised in South Africa. And we thought that the South African accent to a five or six year old would pass for a Transylvanian accent. They wouldn't know the difference. So we hired Fishka. We arranged for both of them to come out to the house where we were doing the pre-production work. And I was going to vet their, their lines with them. And I started with Fishka, got about four minutes in, and I said, you're great, man. I'm, 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 I'm very happy. Moved over to Guy Big, started to read his lines. And, I mean, we didn't even think about this at the time, but a guy who's 31 inches tall is going to have a voice like a guy who's 31 inches tall. So that was the first issue. You had this little tiny whisper of a voice. The second issue was... He didn't know how to read the lines. Like I gave him a line like, uh, get the door, Igor. And he would just say, get the door, Igor. Like you could hardly hear him. And there was no humor, there was no comedy in the line, no humor. And of course, this is supposed to be a comedy show. So I ran with him for about 50, 20, 15 or 20 minutes. <clears throat> then I thought maybe I'll give him a little bit of counseling. And I said, do it like this guy. Igor, get the door. You know, if you sound like a count, you're a count. <clears throat> And he tried it and he said, Igor, get the door. Still didn't work. Anyway, that was it. I called that meeting off for the afternoon, went upstairs, told my brother. And I just said, listen, this is not going to work. The guy does not have a funny bone in his body. He's not going to be able to cut the part. He definitely couldn't cut 130 hour long episodes. I mean, that's got to drain the blood out of anybody. So we got to get rid of him. So my brother and I pulled straws like we always did to see who was going to have to fire him. And since I'm seven years younger, I was then, I still am. I lost. I always lost. And, and I had to go and fire him. We had put him up in a, in a motel around the corner from CHH in Hamilton. So I made arrangements to go there and then meet with him. I met him in the bar in, in the hotel, in the motel. And thank goodness he was already up on the bar stool. I didn't have to help him up onto the bar stool. And I just couldn't think of a nice way to do it. So I just shot from the hip and said, listen, guy, nothing personal. I mean, you're a nice guy. I like you. But you just can't cut this part. You're never going to be able to get through 130-hour-long episodes. And, uh, and if you do, you're going to die at the end. I mean, it just, it's an enormous amount of work, and I don't see you having it in you. But what we will do is we'll let you keep the tuxedo we made for you. We'll pay you what we had agreed to pay you. And uh, we'll give you another job on the show. Like you'll still be in the show. You'll still be on the credits. You just won't be the key, the main character. 
And he took it like a man. And uh, I spun around on my stool, got out into that car. And I tell you, I never heaved such a big sigh of relief in my, in my life. It was off my back. I had done the dastardly deed. Now I go back to Toronto and it's a couple of days later after my brother and I say, oh my God, what the hell are we going to do? We got to start shooting in a couple of days, a couple of weeks, I should say. And Billy walks in to the office and just for nothing, just for something to do with party game. And he said, what's wrong? You guys look like you're about to cry. And we told him what our dilemma was. And he said, uh, let me do it, man. I can do it. Let me do it. And, and Riff said, Billy, you know, you're busy about four days a week shooting excuse me, five episodes of Party Game a day. No way you could handle it. But he said, man, I can do it. Let me try it. He convinced us. And uh, that was it. We hired Billy to be the count. Immediately, as soon as we said, okay, you're in, because we were desperate at the time, he spun around, spun back around 10 seconds later and said, Igor, get the door. I mean, the man was like he delivered a miracle brought us we were praying for and it came as a second nature to it It was no problem and then you'll ask this question anyway but i'll I'll just save you the trouble it evolved from there all we committed to for billy was the count period that's it then as the days went by my brother and i kept adding more characters we we both had an idea i had an idea he had an idea and we, we needed to fill an hour, 47, not, yeah, 47 minutes of, um, oh, sorry, 57 minutes, 53 minutes of television in order to leave room seven minutes for commercials in an hour long episode. So we kept adding ideas and, and new, new, new characters. So at one point we came up with an idea for, um, for a, a witch. I mean, what would be a better fit for a castle like Castle Frankenstein than a witch, a resident witch. And, um, Sure enough, Billy came in for something to do with nothing to do with, with the new characters. And he said, what's up, man? I said, well, we just came up with an idea. I think my brother said, I think we just came up with a new idea for a character we're going to fool around with. We're going to name her Griselda, I think. And she'll be funny and crazy and scary and like that. And Billy turns around, turns back around one minute later and says, uh, 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 Griselda crap, like, woo! I'm going to add some of this and add some of that, and the next thing you know, it's going to explode. And um, uh, he did that with all the characters. So Griselda, who I love, uh, and and of course the Wolfman, and uh, and and the, the the librarian. There's Griselda. There we have, we're showing Griselda on the screen. The librarian. And, and it just, it was just such an am- amalgam, and still is an amalgam of incredible talent, uh, amazing writing, uh, and, and I agree with your assessment that Billy Van was the one that actually um, made the thing fly, but the concept that you came up with at the beginning, the, the, the creativity and the writing and, and the whole concept of this thing, Mitch, I don't know, they say you can never go home again. I don't know if there will ever be anything created that was, was quite so uh, crazily simple yet complicated that that has that has gendered this kind of a kind of a life and I just uh, I am I am so in awe of what you and your brother uh, accomplished by this and you're still involved with this at uh, at comic cons and things all around the world and um, just just kudos to you for what's happened in this 50th year of um, this 50 year anniversary of hilarious house of Frankenstein because it's becoming um, it's becoming, I guess, it's deja vu all over again. It's it's becoming a thing of its own all over again. Uh, and it's wonderful to see. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Much appreciated. You made my day. Well, uh, you certainly made mine. And now, I know it's available just about everywhere, but if somebody that is either an ex-fan or wants to be a new fan or a re-fan or whatever of the Hilarious House of Frankenstein, what is the easiest way for us to get the 130 episodes of HHOF? Well, the easiest way, as I said, on Crave, if you, if you get Crave, if it's available to you, just turn on Crave 
And um, if that's not available to you, everybody in North America and, and outside North America can get Tubi and it's absolutely free. All you got to do is sign up for Tubi and they have commercials. They run commercials. So, But for those of us who grew up watching commercials, it's nothing new for us. Whereas Crave is a streaming service that you pay for and, and there are no commercials. So either way, you're watching on Crave, watch it on Tubi. And hopefully, like I said, within the next six, seven months or so, you know, eight months maybe, um, there will be all 130 episodes available on, on a beautiful box set, including all kind of other little things that will be included with it. By the way, Lee, as you know, and, and your audience should know, that I post on my Twitter site everything that's going to be happening with, with Frankenstein. Every time something comes up, I put it out there on Twitter. And my Twitter site is at the at sign, I'm, like I am, TV's, TBS, Super Hippie, S-U-P-E-R-H-I-P-P-Y. I'm TV's Super Hippie. Just go to Google, punch in at I'm TV Super Hippie, and you don't have to be on Twitter. You don't have to belong to Twitter to, to look at it. If you want to post something, you have to join. But if you just want to look, just go to um, I'm TV Super Hippie and check me out on a regular basis. And uh, you'll, you'll stay posted on what's happening in the wonderful world of Frankenstein. Uh, what's the character Super Hippie on the, on the show? Mitch Markowitz, um, you know I love you. Always a pleasure. Uh, I apologize for the little snafu at the beginning of this conversation, but we got her done. And uh, I really appreciate your time. I know it's uh, at a premium these days. So thanks for being here, my maiden. My, my pleasure, Lee, and, and forgive me. Uh, we can't control our voices, as we know. Take care, my friend. Take care. Ciao for now. Uh, fa we, could, we could make four shows out of talking to him about things that happened on that show. Mitch Markowitz, great, great to have him here. Kevin, thank you for, uh, for, for that, and I apologize for messing up your production at the beginning, because it was entirely me. I didn't have, I, I should have had my computer muted, and I didn't. You know what, it's all good, um, and I loved hearing those stories from ah. Mitch. Um, you're more of a fan. I grew up with Hilarious yeah, yeah, House yeah. of Frightenstein. Yeah. Um, so that interview and doing a little research leading up to it made me realize what a gem this was and how Hamilton the production is. Oh, absolutely. And it's gone worldwide. And yeah. that's so cool to see. And I'm happy for Mitch and happy for everybody involved in the show. Something that's so like cool. Three months they did. <laughs> that's crazy. I know. And here we are 50 years later talking about it. Yeah. So, so obviously they, uh, they hit on something. Yeah. Sounds a lot of fun. Um, our, our next planned uh, appearance uh, on the program, I'm assuming, is ready to go. Ryan Nava is the owner of Tailgates Bar and Grill, which has been the subject of much conversation and conjecture uh, over the last few weeks. And finally, we have been able to get the man himself here on the program to talk to us about it. Ryan, welcome to Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. Glad to have you on the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate well, it. Yeah. Well, you're welcome, uh, and I appreciate the fact that you're now free to come and uh, talk to us. Because I know when you're in the middle of something like this that has legal ramifications and financial ramifications, you've got to be careful. So I appreciate, I appreciate that fact. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. Yeah. So, fill us in on where we are right now with the tailgate story. Well, I'd like to I'd like to let everybody know that we are back open. Um, we are uh, we are not fully open. Our kitchen still isn't fully open. Um, we're, we're, the roof is being fixed at the moment, and we're hoping by um, end of day tomorrow or midday tomorrow that it'll be completed. Um, it's been a long time coming, and uh, just looking forward to getting back up and running and serving our our wings that people know are the best wings around, and uh, and serving our serving our patrons who've been loyal and. Who've been so supportive, and uh, we can't wait for that. So, Ryan, mm -hmm. let, let, let's walk you back a little bit. Now, of course, we know the COVID thing hit us on March twentieth of twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh, how did how did that particular phase hit your business to start with? <laughs> it was uh, it was tough. It was tough, man. Um, we were uh, like we. I was only there for about three months. We took over tailgates. And um, 
things were rocking and then COVID came and it was like uh it was like a shot in the back like you know what i mean like no one was expecting it you heard rumors you didn't know how it was going to affect you mm-hmm. and uh it was it was tough it was the the not knowing what it, what was about to come was the hardest part because you can't plan for it right yeah so i think that was a tough thing for all restaurateurs is that this business is all about planning and getting things ready and getting things organized and then when something comes that you can have no control over it's it's a it's a shot in the dark right and then and then at what at what point in time now we flash forward to at what point in time did the so-called uh rent non-payment roof issue prop up when Uh, did that that start basically uh don't remember the exact date but november the third well i got it up here november 8th so i put that on the screen is there a chance it was the 8th on a tuesday uh i guess anyway it doesn't doesn't really matter but a morning you walk in and all of a sudden the doors are locked is, is that yeah. how you first found out? Yeah, November 5th, I think that was. Um, uh, I can't remember the date exactly. Um, my brain is fried. <laughs> I, think Kevin, but, I uh, think Kevin did the research. I think it was yeah. the 8th. Yeah, but I might, have been, I might have been off. But, I mean, the date doesn't really matter. It's, no. it's, it's yeah. the sequence of events. Tell us yeah. about that. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So basically how when, did this go? So basically when we, when we, when we took, uh, took over tailgates... The roof started. The roof was leaking from day one, um, pretty much. And what, from what um, customers have told me, the roof's been leaking for a while, a lot longer than before I took over. Um, it was something I was dealing with the whole time through through the pandemic and without the pandemic, um, affecting my business, uh, not being able to open properly um, for the past two years. Um, the, the roof was ordered to be fixed by the city and, um, by, by November 30th was the date that it has to be fixed by replaced by, but I was not supposed to be, um, having any leaks in my business starting August 31st, Okay, which didn't happen. Um, so the roof, I got locked though. Two days later, they're fixing the roof. Um, I'm back in. The roof is pretty much completely fixed from what I know. But I, I don't have a kitchen because the exhaust fan's not back up. So in all reality, it's been it's been it's been it's been hell. But uh, but looking forward, like I just gotta I just wanna say thank you to so many people, to you guys for for talking to me and talking about the story and and my staff who, who fought for their jobs, you know what I mean? Um, they, 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 um, what's the best word? Like, I'm so thankful. The love, the support, the outpouring of support that people have reached out and saying, keep fight, keep fighting, keep fighting. Um, they know what kind of uh, business we run. Um, we were never, uh, we, we weren't behind on rent, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. We're running a good business. We want to be a staple in the community. We want to give back to the community. And the community showed us so much love over the past few weeks. I, I can't say enough about um, everyone and, the, and and thank you. Well, it's the a love staple. has been amazing. I love Welland. Ta- Tailgates is a staple in that community and it's uh, we're, we're happy to hear it's going to continue. And this never was, this never was a rent issue, was it, ever? As far as I know, no. Okay, so um, I, one of my the rent, things my rent was paid. Okay, one of the things that Kevin and I have talked about, and I've, hundreds of other people as well in conversations, is when when you sign a, a lease as a as a tenant of a building, in this case, sort of a small plaza type uh, type yeah. arrangement, is there are things that are the responsibilities of the landlord and and responsibilities of the tenant. These things yeah, are absolutely. stipulated quite clearly, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How can well, a, how can a leak not always not not always clearly, especially was, when, was was it clear in yours? Especially to a layperson who doesn't really know the lingo and the talk 
you rely on um, you rely on the trust and the the professionalism of other people and and the honesty of other people to 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 make sure that you're doing the right thing and okay. it's fair and stuff like that. So um, I can't really comment on that because I'm not a, a lawyer. Um, but but yeah, leases basically are there to it's a it's a it's an um, an agreement, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just would have I just would have assumed that the landlord would be would be responsible for structural repair. Yep. Yeah. And I, I would think that would be something that's fairly clear. I just want my yeah. question. My question was you probably can't go there, but my question was. Why would a leaky roof in a facility like that have gone on so long without being attended to? I honestly can't give you a good answer. Yeah. I cannot give you a good answer to that. And I wish I could, but I, I can't because it's I'm asking the same question. Okay. Kevin? Yeah, yeah <laughs> Ryan, to that, let me let me hop in here. Um I, I saw and came across a video online of what is purported to be of the leak that was taking place inside of tailgates. I'm just going to play it here for people. Um, I'm sure, I mean, it looks like tailgates, this is it. But, I mean, is this is this really how bad the I'm leaking was? i trying to get was? a sense of what that... Oh, my God. That's uh, not a leak. That's rain. And it rained almost every day in October. That's, I mean, that's beyond leak. Anybody that sees that video automatically would fall on your side and go... That is the inside of tailgates? Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> you probably yes, you've probably been, seen this it, video. It's, it's been tough to run a business like that. It's been that, tough to run a business no like kidding. that. Um, um, oh my God! Chicken wings, you'd have chicken flippers. Yeah, and I don't want to. And my thing is, I don't want to serve people with <laughs> while it's raining in well, my no. business. No, that's you know what I mean. That's so, amazing. That's I mean, it's amazing. raining harder inside tailgates than it is outside. It's outside. That's and it. and then the and then you and then you add COVID on top of that. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, the safety so. and health of people with this pandemic. It's been a struggle. You know what I mean? But honestly, I, again, I want to go back to saying thank you, thank you to everyone. Like the love and outpouring of support has been overwhelming. Um, well, Ryan, a lot of people, a lot of people would have folded their tent, and yeah. and gone home. Yeah. So to all those people that have supported you, thank you for sticking in there and not folding your tent and going home. And um, we look forward to seeing you. When are you going to be, in your estimation, up to complete? Did we lose, Brian? Sorry, some <laughs> probably just got a notification or something. Yeah, you're, you're still back. there somewhere. When Sorry, when, when do you feel that you're going to be exactly at a hundred percent or uh, above total total operation? I'm I'm praying tomorrow night. That's All right, so that's soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm praying to have my uh, fryers back up, serving wings. We got uh, we got uh, I got a great great head cook back there, uh, Mike. He's awesome. He's uh, he's ready and willing to to put out some great food for everyone. Um, okay. And 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 it's coming. Uh, I got a great front of the house manager, uh, Sue. She's getting the front of the half the front of the house staff trained and ready to go for when we fully open um i got some great staff and i want to thank them I'll thank them live here thank you guys i appreciate all, all the fight and determination they they stood by me and they didn't have to um they wanted to and they and i really appreciate that we got a great crew we got great patrons we got a great city and uh only better things to come in the future um you know we got with, with everything that's happened, you know what I mean. You gotta, you gotta be grateful for what you have in life. Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. Friends and family, and try to make things better. And and I'm gonna work to make things better with the landlord if I can. Um, you know what I mean. Moving forward, because we, the the bottom line is I have 30, 30 employees that I gotta think about too. You know what I mean. Yep. It's not just myself. And so, kudos, uh, kudos to you for sticking it out. Uh, and uh, this is all good news, uh, Ryan Nava. Yeah. We're gonna gonna move on. Owner of Tailgate Tailgates uh, Bar and Grill, alive and well and healthy and well. And uh, stay a friend of the program and keep us posted, okay, pal? I love what you guys do. Keep it up. Niagara loves you guys, and uh, thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Take, uh, have a good weekend. Good luck with your opening. And say hi to Phil for me too. Yeah, we will. <laughs> I'm sure he'll check in again too. 
Thanks. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks. All right, bye. There we go. Awesome. Uh, Kevin, uh, great show today. Um, well produced, other than, other than my little uh, uh, faux pas, faux pas, faux pas. Uh, early on. But I guess when we're doing live communications, this can happen. Uh, it's no, it didn't, all on me. didn't bother me one bit. It's no. live. That's, that's yeah, the fun of being yeah. live. I feel worse for, uh, I, for Mitch. Yeah, I didn't want to inconvenience Mitch because we were blaming him and it was me. Yeah, that's all right. Um, we got uh, Sammy Morelli coming up here in in a minute or yeah, two. Yeah. Uh, is there anything from? We didn't have a lot of time with all these guests, kind of back to back to back, to touch on a lot of the four one one stuff. No. There were a few stories that that popped out this week. I'm not yeah. sure if there were one or two or three that you wanted to well, slide in here um, at the end of the we show. We wanted to touch base again because we continue to try to follow the story of Darren Werner, uh, the missing man from Niagara on the lake. Kevin and I talk about this every week behind the scenes. Uh, because we're trying to maybe find someone that can speak to this. So I did reach out, Lee, this week to Darren's, I, I don't know if he has more, but two children, a son and a daughter, who had, you know, posted on social media. So right. I reached out to them, uh, gave the son a couple of calls at his business, didn't leave a message because I didn't want to disturb him, yeah. um, but I haven't heard back. So I'll try a little, a little harder for next week. But if anybody watching the program, if you have a family connection to the Werners, really what we want to do is we want to shine a light on this yeah, because, and, and get it back on the front page. Because this is a, and that's a, that's a good point, the, the front page, because we've talked about this before. When something slides off the immediate uh, page uh, of, of, uh, of reality, of consciousness, it fades away fast. Uh, and, and the media cycle, the news cycle, can be so short that these things continue to fall through the cracks. And that's what we don't want to have happen with a lot of stories that are in Niagara. And this is a prime example, because this man just disappeared off into the ether. Now, even the quote from the NRP was saying, I've never like, seen anything like no, this. No, even the cops have never seen anything like this. Uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's important to us. It's, uh, it's one of those things that I'm sure as an investigator, as a detective or whatever, you know, you've got that little niggling thing in the back of your mind every night when you go to sleep. What happened to Darren? What happened to Darren? What happened to Darren? And, and we're kind of the same way. So we're, we're going to continue to try to probe that uh, with people that knew him, know him, whatever. Also, there was kind of a sad story. The... the there's a really interesting sign, and it's been there for decades. Uh, and it's a sign that points to the the Game and Fish Association in uh, in Port Dalhousie. That's the sign right there. Game and Fish Association, Dalhousie Yacht Club, that away, um, that away. It's, and as a matter of fact, ironically, I saw somebody a week ago actually repainting those lovely yellow letters so carefully to make sure that the sign uh, still stood out because they fade over time and there was a guy there repainting those lovely letters well somebody took the sign somebody after all these years some lowly life uh, took the sign Kevin my uh, I, I my flabber is gasted. I just <laughs> I don't I don't understand. You know what? It's probably hanging in a dorm room somewhere. You know yeah. when when you're that age. Blame the college kids, Kevin. Well, Blame I know. I mean, who else is stealing signs that say St. Catharines? I mean, I don't, know. I don't know. And especially there, the uh, the story of it. The the guy saying that his his grandfather in his retirement years worked on it. Yeah. Worked on that sign. It was great to see somebody out there. Labor of love. Uh, Probably nobody paid for it. It was just a labor of love to put the thing up there. They were either a member of Game and Fish or they're a yacht club member, or whatever. And uh, Lee, just yeah. before we get to uh, Sammy. Um, you know, I guess we're going to start and end the show with a tragedy because there was one at uh, Ma Cuisine, and I was following along on Niagara 411, as were a lot of people as the events unfolded. Yeah, we just we just wanted to mention this so that we could pass out our incredible condolences to the friends and family of these men. What a what an unusual and terrible thing to have happen. There was a fire at the Ma Restaurant on uh, on Geneva Street in St. Catharines. There were two roofers working their, working their craft uh, on, this, on this facility. A fire broke out 
at the restaurant. We're not completely sure of the details, so we won't even offer any conjecture because it's still under investigation. But both men were severely injured in this, in this incident, incident, one of the roofers, and one of those men passed away, died as a result. I believe a 46-year-old man from Markham. It's terrible. Goes to work one day. You get up in the morning, go to work as a roofer, which is a hard enough job as it is, let alone thinking that your life might be at risk for some reason, and that's how the day ends for the family and, and friends of this of this man. Terrible story. And uh, again, we're sorry for your loss. And you know the uh, Ma Cuisine family and all the workers, as we were talking to yeah. Ryan there, you know, would you think that it's 30 people employed by tailgates? But those are the numbers, so... Ma Cuisine, probably the same number, and they're all affected as well. I don't think the restaurant's reopened yet. Oh, I would think not. Who knows as to the future of their yeah. business, if they're going to be able to operate, and then, of course, uh, the grief, and who knows if there was a family or friend connection between the roofers and the people that worked at the restaurant. Quite often there is. And, and one, of the, uh, one of the people that I wanted to acknowledge as well, going back to an early interview, and we spoke with Nancy, wife of uh, Mark Stewart, who died in that accident in Jordan as a result of his truck hitting uh, an automobile driven by an 80-year-old woman who was uh, impaired and then bouncing off that and smacking into uh, and coming in contact with a, with a transport truck driven by a 20-something-year-old fellow. I wanted to mention something to that 20-year-old, 20 20-plus-year-old 20 driver's family as well because that's something that will probably live in infamy with him and them for even though he was not at fault your vehicle comes in contact with the vehicle of someone who dies that has to stay with you for a while so we hope you're doing okay as well on that side of the fence well, it's not the best way to end the program lee no and i'm not ending it that way okay good because we're going into a, a light-hearted yeah. upbeat song from Sammy I wanna, Morelli. I, 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 I just wanted to mention that. I wanted to thank Nancy for being here. I wanted to thank Ryan again for being here. Mitch Markowitz, uh, definitely an upper of the program with the 50th anniversary of Hilarious House of Frightenstein. Uh, check out the interview. Check out the show. Find it. Enjoy it all over again. And uh, Kevin Jack, thank you. Gail's Guest Bars, thank you for uh, supporting this program as our title sponsor. Thank you to Performance Heating and Air, as well as Verge Insurance Group. I'm Lee Sterry and Sammy Morelli, a former Niagara resident, with Love Away to play us off the stage. Everybody have a great weekend. Second Chance is the only game where you get to try again. Now, let's meet our bachelorette here. Sammy, what are you looking for in a partner? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for someone who's done the work on themselves and really knows how to treat me right. Very well. Well, we have three men waiting from your past to try again. Let's meet them and see what they have to say. <laughs> Breaking promises